Hi, my name is Emily Burdett, and I'm an assistant professor here at the University of Nottingham and also a research affiliate at the University of Oxford. And today I'm going to be doing a, a bunch of sections on attachment, and um, there'll be five sections talking about um, things from attachment theory to Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis to talking about animal studies. We'll be talking about the strange situation um, and also how attachment affects people in different situations, like in orphanages, and also throughout time, so what attachment looks like in later development. Um, but first, what I would like to talk about, what exactly is attachment? So attachment is the emotional bond or tie that an infant shares with a mother. Um, this is Bowlby's narrow definition of what attachment is, although other people think that attachment has to do with other caregivers. So attachment theory, then, is the concept that derives from the quality of attachment with a mother, but also because of this growing sense of security or that bond between mother and child, it allows the child to feel the security to go and explore the environment. So attachment theory is the type of attachment that you have with your mother, but also uh, the sense of how much one can explore the environment based on that attachment. So this idea is based on the seminal work by a psychologist named John Bowlby, and a lot of this work was done in the 1960s. And just to give you some context of where it comes from, I'll give you a bit of his background. So he was fascinated by um, psychopathology, so in other words, how a person develops um, any kind of mental illness or maladjustment. And he noticed that in the Second World War, um, particularly children who were evacuated during the bombings in London, were having a lot of trouble, a lot of maladjustment, um, being away, separated from their families. So this got him thinking about other things as well. So he was working in a clinic at the time, and this study has been come to be known as the 44 uh, Juvenile Thieves, is what the study is called. And it's called 44 Juvenile Thieves because he took a sample of 44 children who had a history of stealing, and he compared it with 44 children who were also being seen at the clinic but weren't um, involved in any kind of stealing. And what he found, he took extensive histories of these children and lots of background information. And the thing that he noted was of the 44 thieves, 17 of them had prolonged periods of separation from their parents before the age of five. And this didn't seem the case with the other children. So this got him thinking there must be something really special about the relationship be between a child and their caregiver. And perhaps there's a critical period before the age of five that seems to be a pivotal piece of why these children were um, becoming delinquent. So he called this the maternal deprivation hypothesis. So he's thinking um, that children separated from a parent or another caregiver, um, seems, there seems to be a piece to this that has long-term consequences for their cognitive and emotional state. So because of this, um, he developed the theory of attachment theory. And some of this has some basis in evolutionary uh, theory as well. So he also thought that not only other animals, but children as well, have a basic instinct to seek proximity, so closeness to a caregiver. And because of this evolutionary root, we all have the propensity to want to seek closeness to, especially the mother. There could be other caregivers, but John Bowlby was especially interested in the mother and the child relationship. He was quite specific too. So while, whereas other researchers talk about attachment to their grandparents or to fathers, John Bowlby was particularly um, attached to this idea of the mother-infant relationship, and he called this the monotropic relationship. So all of this leads to something he also called the internal working model. Um, so this is the idea in attachment that the, the more you feel secure with your mother, um, so a lot of uh, interactions that are positive, you're feeling like your needs are being met, um, you start to develop internal working model of feeling secure. So the more you feel secure, the more you feel your needs are met, um, the much more likely you're gonna have a really secure attachment to your mother. Where he's seen um, some of these insecure attachments, so let's start thinking about these juvenile thieves or some of these other more delinquent behavior that we see in these other children he was starting to see that they were very angry and confused, so their memories of their parents and caregiving relationships were more negative. Um, there's also that periods of prolonged separation, and so he started to see that there were some insecure attachments had to do with the quality, the poor quality of the relationship, and also these periods of absences. 
But just to let you know, there are some criticisms of Jean Bowlby's theory. So I want to list three that you should be aware of. One of them is John Bowlby's focus on the quality of attachment with the mother. Of course, children can be attached to other types of relationships, including people like their father, could be a grandmother, could be a nanny, could be a sibling. Um, those are all really important attachment relationships. And other research has shown that even if a child has a poor attachment to a mother, they can actually still develop into a secure uh, individual. Um, because they may have had a good relationship with the father or a good relationship with a grandparent. Okay, the second thing I want to highlight is he was very concerned about maternal deprivation. So in cases where mothers were absent for long periods of time in that earlier five-year period. And I think other research want to say it's not just about the presence, it's the quality of interaction. So if a mother was present the whole uh, five years, those first five years, that's important. But if the mother's not speaking to the child or responding in a sensitive way, that also has an extreme consequence for the child as well. And lastly, so this is the third thing, we want to think about cultural considerations. So the idea that um, the mother and child have this exclusive caregiving relationship actually only pertains to a small portion um, of the world's population. In a large portion of the world, there's other people taking care of the child, and these are grandparents, um, aunts and uncles, siblings, and they see in, in those situations um, that children are still raised to be insecure, happy relationships. So I think John Bowlby's theory about this mother and child infant relationship, it doesn't necessarily apply to all of the world and the populations within them. Okay, so we've been talking about maternal deprivation and John Bowlby, and I think this is an important first section to talk about because this gives the context and the historical background to talking about attachment. In the next section, we'll be talking about some animal studies that support some of John Bowlby's research.